welcome. <laughs> Um, I'm Eliza Tudor. I am executive director of Nevada County Arts Council. We've driven up from Nevada City and we stopped along the way in um, Quincy in Venus. And tomorrow we're going to be in Altoona, so no job. Next we're going to be in various other counties until we've completely seen upstate um, California. And we are so grateful to be here with you and to be hosted by your County Arts Council. And Laura's been amazing. We only started work on this incredible program at the beginning of October. And it runs through until late September 2024. So um, I started with putting this on, on the wall as our first slide. Does it, do you relate to what it says? Um, Yeah. Health is not just about business, is it? It's about <laughs> many other societal, community oriented, you know, environmental factors. Um, so, yes, we're working with the California Arts Council, and the program is called California Creative Core. And the Nevada County Arts Council applied um, a few months back um, to the what's called an administrative organization for the California Arts Council. Um, and in doing so, our whole model of the, 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 the um, route for success for us was being able to say within the application that we would be working with every single community arts council within the region that we hope to serve because we knew that we wanted that local input and local knowledge and local, local experience. Um, who are we in the Valley County Arts Council to come to you and tell you what your issues are and tell you how to tackle them? And we need to work in partnership. So I would love a part of what we do at, uh, at the Arts Council in Nevada is to um, acknowledge the place that we have in relation to the people who've been there before. Does anyone in the room, does anyone in the room like to acknowledge um, um, you know, our tribal acknowledgement today? Is this something that you do at the Arts Council, Stephanie? It's something that they do at the City Council meetings. They do oh, the land right. acknowledgement statement at every City Council meeting. I used to work for the Susanville Indian Rancheria, which makes up the four local tribes, which are Pitt River, Paiute, Maidu, and Washoe. Those are the four indigenous tribes in the Susanville area um, that make up the Susanville Indian Rancheria. But there are several other tribes within this region as well. So it's lovely. You've named them. We are here on our land. So that's really what I wanted to do. So thank you. That's great. Um, I'm going to put this on the end of the as well. So <coughs> California Creative Core, what is it? The governor in the 2021-22 budget gave, um, decided that he wanted to spend important recovery funds through workforce development and gave $60 million, just under $60 million to the California Arts Council, through which his intention was, is to pay artists position artists and pay them art, um, artists um, in relation to issues that are critical to society. When we applied for this um, important, and then they, they immediately cut up California, let's, let's go through this, um, into different regions. So you see on the left here, you have a map of California divided up by county, but then region. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight regions. And the yellow region is ours. That's where we are, and it's upstate California. And of course, we know that this is the most geographically diverse partitioning of California of, among the eight regions. You know, we have high desert, low desert, foothills, you know, converging mountain range of ranges confluences of river systems and valleys and you have the sea. It's hugely diverse and by far the largest area of California. So that's a lot of administering. 
which is why we went in order to get some more rather than just pivot from the Nevada city. And of course, there are many other ways of looking at California. On the left is a map of what's called the surf regions. Surf being an acronym for the Community Economic Resiliency Fund, which is a simultaneously running large pot of money from the state again, but being dispersed across California to assist in workforce development and resiliency and recovery type projects. Um, and then, would you like to speak to another one? Well, well, for the upstate, I eat some nuts. <laughs> for, for the upstate region, which uh, constitutes the 19 northern counties up here, there are three different hydrologic regions. So it's another way to look at it as we enter into a place where, when, if the drop of rain fell, where would it drain out to? It? So we have now crossed a watershed divide coming from Quincy to here, where water was flowing there down would go out the Sacramento River and out to the Golden Gate. Now we're in the Mountain Valley um, drainage watersheds in between the Central and the Great East Lake and drains out there. The other part of the upstate region includes the area that is considered the North Coast and all of those watersheds drain directly out to the ocean above San Francisco Bay. So, and then of course the map on the bottom right speaks to how to reach these communities by road. <clears throat> so as we're planning our visits, of course, we're looking at this and communities and relationship relationships based upon their proximity to one another and the routes that carry them. So many different ways of looking at upstate California. I want to speak to this particular extraordinary snapshot of, of the upstate region. Well, yeah, so I'm getting these sort of problems before the other pieces. But just one thing about the upstate region with the 19 counties that it's, it, um, if you'll call that map of four that broke up California with the different areas, um, you know, some areas have only five tracks in it, when there are, I mean, five counties in it. So when they're looking at the ocean, speaking with the community, it's quite different. But this region has 19 different counties with a humongous range, and, you know, anywhere from the population of each of the different counties. From the smallest being in Sierra County to the largest in Placer County. Um, we just mentioned the hydrologic regions, tremendous range in rainfall. We go out to Del Norte, you know, it's up to 95 inches rain a year. You know, we're looking tomorrow we go up to El Torres, 14 inches of rain a year. So, um, and also again, the elevation changes, the economies that's going on through. and. Um, so although population-wise, those 19 counties represent 4.2% of the population in California, it represents 31% of the total geography of California for this upstate region. It's amazing, isn't it? So again, when we were applying, we were thinking, how on earth can we possibly manage such a big area? Um, you're two among you are aware of of there being county arts agencies with county arts councils in every county. Are you aware of that? It's Stephanie is. So Stephanie and I um, representing the arts council are um, part of what's called the, the state local program. So we've reported there are 58 counties in California. Ideally, there is one agency representing the arts for that county in each county. There are 54 of us at the moment in 58 counties. Um, and um, we report into both the California Arts Council as the state agency for the arts, but also our board of supervisors in each county. So we're one of the most, like, if you looked around, um, and then I know that we have a um, wonderful uh, arts organization here in, um, in Lassa. Um, you're unlikely to find an agency more accountable than the local arts council. We have to. Um, create the most extraordinary level of accountability in order to um, be uh, for our county boards and supervisors to pass a resolution each year naming a student eligible to apply to the state for the most nominal amount of funding ever. But we're working on that. <laughs> I appreciate that. <laughs> Is there anyone representing the county here? Yes. Not the county. The city parts. Yes, exactly. Anyone with the county of, uh, yes? Oh, 
Oh, I'd love to hear what you know with that. Yes, of course. Take more time. <laughs> I am with uh, the Department of Health. Oh, fantastic. I head up the tobacco use production. What you, this is great. I'm, I'm so pleased you're having a welcome. So, um, about 80% of county arts councils across the state are publicly funded through their counties. About 70% of that 80% are funded through general operations. Um, is, is, tell me, is Lassen County Arts Council funded by the local county? Do you know? We are funded entirely by the state and local partnership grants, as well as through donations and fundraising from our members. Yeah, and grants, of course. Yeah. And that's the same with Nevada County. So, in other words, Lassen County and Nevada County Arts Council are part of the minority of agencies that are not funded by their counties. And hopefully that will change over time. Because we know that where where art is prolific, um, you know, there is also incredible spurs to social and economic benefits as well. So our aim is to work with our state local partners, our county arts councils across the state region to make sure that we leverage um, the maximum number of meaningful connections for our communities. And so today we're introducing a new method. Um, by the state for evaluating the relative health of communities across California. It was created by the Public Health Alliance of Southern California for the whole of California. And it, it essentially manifests as a digital map that is that displays that defaults to a bird's eye view of census tracts across California. You can also view it by county. Um, and you can do it by congressional region, Senate, the any legislative region, and in other ways as well, by city region, et cetera, et cetera. But we're going to view it today from the perspective of the default view, which is by track. And there's a reason for that, isn't there? Why why do you think the, the census tracks are used by the you know, Healthy places in the hospital before? <laughs> yeah, I mean census tracks generally are are, are set up to not change over time so you have that comparable data over the decades um sometimes if the population grows very quickly they might be split or so if the population goes down to the tracks might need to combine but overall and it tends to also follow um, geographic boundaries um, whether it's rivers or road or lake boundaries um, so again that's part of what holds it sort of the consistency over time and it's marvelous actually working on a project like this at the research and development stage that we are now because honestly I, I have hardly given it a second thought as to what census tracts meant, what their meaning was, other than for gathering data. I haven't considered what the rationale was. So it does make sense that it's the default view. So this is what it looks like. If you were to go to a healthy places index.org. And it seems so academic and sort of technical, but it's actually really fascinating. Um, is there anyone on our Zoom call? So um, we, we, we have a, a link where sort of everyone from the public can join us in the of Lassen. And had we had people join us from where we would be sort of popping in the links to the chat, etc. So anybody in this room, um, just about to ask you who you are. Um, who is possibly interested in positioning themselves for funding or encouraging others to get to know your healthy places in that map. It is one of the most fascinating things. And we, we have shared this presentation with Laura here at the gallery. And what we'll do is we'll take down your emails while you're, while you're in my happy years, but we'll do it again on a piece of paper and create a little email list so that I can send it to each of you because I'm going to have key links and a link to a website that we're developing, et cetera, et cetera. But get to know this. It's full of story. It looks so dry, but it's full of story. So here we go. What's it called? First of all, what do you see about what sort of relative confusion do you draw just by looking at upstate California in this map? What do you see? It's big. It's big. And of course, I haven't given you the critical clue to what you see. So um, the darker the green on this map, 
the more healthy the community. The darker the blue, the least healthy the community. I was about to get to <laughs> I know. Um, while this is going to so Katrina's passing around the email and make sure we can read your writing. Anything you want to give us email or phone number, whatever, please do a name and any affiliation. Um, yeah, so the light blue, the dark blue is the least healthy, then it's light blue, and then it goes to light green, like it's getting up towards the healthy, and then there's dark green, which is relatively healthy by um, comparison to the rest. Um, and there are indicators within each of these pale blue, dark blue, light green, dark green tracks that also bring it down or elevate it in terms of time. Great question. <laughs> well, so as part of this, um, they developed areas where they felt that there wasn't enough data to draw a conclusion. So the population under 1500 well, meets the exclusion criteria. It doesn't mean that it's excluded from thought, you know, of course, but they just can't draw a conclusion from the results of that and census data. The other criteria that can affect that is if there is um, a large uh, percentage of population that is in some kind of dormitory style living, that could be such as prison, <laughs> prisons or um, of senior facilities uh, where there's not for me. And it's, it seems to be significant as well in, in upstate California. I'm imagining that much of that, especially along the eastern part of upstate, is probably the you know the mountainous regions where it's more it's less less populated. Well, and around here, obviously, the present for that area. Yeah, exactly. I have another question. What is the criteria? Yeah, for a healthy. So this is where we um we're, we're going to look sure. at this the priority yeah. action areas. Um, would you mind just like going on to my my phone uh, looking up? This is the one slide that's missing the policy action areas. And then we have, yeah, it's in this. Is it? Oh, you mean as a separate one? Yes. It is under last one. Oh, fantastic. Oh, okay, we're all there. Where are we? Can you get to your first track? So I guess you, I don't want to skip ahead or just. Work. Yes, okay. So, first of all, in addition to the indicators that decide whether a community is healthy or unhealthy, the Healthy Places Index is also measuring the degree to which the social demographics include, um, you know, racial and cultural um, considerations. So here, for example, in Nassau County, we can see that 1.4 percent of the population is. It's, it's extraordinary that they're called American Indians, and we don't use the word Indian, but this map uses the word Indian. Which sort of slightly unnerving. <laughs> um, but this is, it's absolutely fascinating. So it tells you in every single um, tract exactly what the demographic makes up is. So skipping ahead a little, if you were to write a grant from early spring next year, you'd want to be somehow referring to or showing your understanding of, you know, the cultural makeup of the place that you call home. So let's move into this. So let's talk to those. Well, as so as we come in and look here at last, <laughs> this is actually the first, instead of going to Healthy Places Index first, it's just oriented to the county here. So in looking at it, there are nine census tracts, two of which are excluded. One is based on the busy population, and the other is based on less than 1,500. Um, of course, you know your state local partner here, Blasphemy County Arts Council. Um, looking at the different waterways within here and the national lands, the federal lands as well, and the prisons to understand, the prisons to understand mm -hmm. like one federal and two state prisons. And where the county seat was. So this was really just us orienting ourselves to Lassie County. So I'm gonna I'm going to um I'm going to answer your question like right now because I believe it's a, a slide that's missing. And then this will ground you as we move forward. So that what they're looking at in determining a community's relative health 
of economic indicators such as employment, per capita income, and poverty levels. Education, such as the degree to which communities might be preschool, um, they're enrolling their kids in preschool. Um, bachelor education, high school enrollment, all these then give you reasons like how is that connected to health? Um, social is very much connected with voting and the degree to which individuals feel that they want voice in, in, the, in the outcomes of um, you know, public elections, etc. And the degree to which um, folks are actually completing census response. And what are the reasons if they are or are not? Transportation plays highly. Um, it was so sweet today because as we were driving into Lassen, one of your rural um, county Lassen county rural Lassen buses, they were the cutest thing in this past one. Mm -hmm. um, and so we're hoping that you have lots of them because apparently that's an indicator of of a community, the degree to which people can move between parts. Um, and uh, so automobile access and active commuting, you know, who's, who's able to commute for better jobs elsewhere from their homes and who isn't and why? Healthcare access, obviously, um, the degree to which adults have insurance or can get insurance and can be covered. Um, and then neighborhood. Neighborhood looks at retail density, park access, and tree canopy. So park access, for example, if you are within half a mile's walking distance of a space where you can sit on a bench and enjoy the freedom of nature, um, that's considered a very healthy option for the community. And even though we live in rural California, it's remarkable. Um, when you take that away, how it affects your health. Um, uh, that, but that one was park access. Um, it's it's park park park. Park. Yeah, well, park park. Park. yeah, exactly. And then housing. And all this is within the Healthy Places Index, and we'll show you exactly how to access it. This part of tonight is showing you how to access this data in the hope that if you are prepared to create an application for funding, you'll know how to relate your application to this. Does that make sense? And then housing, the degree to which, you know, there are severely cost burden of low income renters um, or cost burden of low income homeowners or even housing habitability. You know, our how is housing habitable? Um, and then the degree to which housing is uncrowded and closing the list. So it's actually fascinating. Then clean environment, um, which, you know, um, which is ozone, um, fine particulate matter, um, diesel particulate matter. And we're talking about snow, fire, maybe, could be many things, and safe drinking water. So, um, and there are, there are other areas as well, but we're just going to, we're going to glance now, we're going to sort of go into Lassie a little bit. Can you talk to this? Yeah, sure. We already did this one, didn't we? So here we go. This gets interesting. It's another way of looking at Lassen. So it just within coming within the community, obviously we were very aware of the community, all the more so after driving to the city today, but aware as well because we're a neighboring county and have been um, exposed not only to our old wild our own wildflowers, but even to communities up here. So looking at Last and of course, there's a huge history of wildfire over time. Um, there's the changing nature of the fires too, as they burn hotter. So it's just something to come on in of the awareness of how much is this playing a role within community and community health. Perfect. Okay. And then here's Lassen. <laughs> so in looking at Lassen, this is a summary of a lot of information here, and we're going to need to go into a couple specific tracks in just a bit and show you how we need the Healthy Places Index to understand some of the, um, some of the numbers. But I just, overall, Lassen gets this, what's called the 28.6 percentile score. That basically means that they're, the way I wrote it right here, it's considered to have healthier conditions than 28.6% of 
of other California Indian counties. So you can also look at that reverse the other way. We can map 71.4% of better conditions according to these indices. So within the county here, there's two dark blue tracks. That was the zero to 25th percentile. Three light blue and then two light green, which is the 50 to 75th percentile. There were no dark blue tracks. So there's a the per capita income with the um, lowest being, well, but wait, I see this stuff. These my things right here. The lowest is at twenty two thousand, and the highest at thirty seven thousand. Um, it was interesting the comparison of that versus like looking at Plymouth. There was a much larger range, and for that from a lot of other areas too. This incredibly huge range. Um, so, in going through for the lowest scores that were seen for Lassen, the economic scores were the lowest. Employment levels being at the five point four percentile again. That one was like. You know, 76, I'm trying to do my math, but 74% of counties actually have higher employment levels than less in Lassen County. Um, we're going to go more into track 406. Let's now look at that lowest employment. So, this is the, the tract, and you can sort of see it in the region outlined in black. This is the tract that had the lowest overall HPI score. So, try and understand well, why did it end up with this lowest score. This is where we're going to see the slide that shows us. So the different variables, the policy action areas. Each one of those areas, uh, when you click on the little arrow on the right and open it up, it'll go into the details of each of the um, those. So for instance, in economic, we can see that for the employment levels and per capita income, both of those were in the dark blue category. So if you go back one again, just real quickly, just so we see some of the others. Obviously, education as well, and social were low scores, and the neighborhood. So we'll go more into some of those, but there's also ones that I just want to highlight that rank not necessarily with the dark blue overall. That doesn't mean that there aren't areas to address within each category. It's just the way the score averages. That's 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 I know. That's 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 it might be good to turn it off. I think it's what they were told. It was coming from all the way. I'm so sorry. Okay, no problem at all. So go ahead. Yeah, yeah I just yeah. wanted to come back. No, no, no yeah. problem at all. So um, this is still going more into the employment, just to look because I was quite shocked. Is you know again coming up with these percentiles, the fact that it said it was the zero point two percentile in terms of employment in Track Four Hundred Six. So again, that means so that it was. 31.4% of people aged 25 to 64 are doing the census, census income data with have a job. So that means that it has healthier conditions of only 0.2% of other Oh, that's terrible, isn't it? That's a fabulous thing to create a profit for, isn't it? So what would that project do? So another area looking at uh, Susanville right here, that's this track 40304. There's the areas there, the policy action areas that all scored within the dark blue. So I'll go further in to look at what some of those entail. Again, the employment level higher, but still at 4.8 percentile in California. Um, and then you can compare it to the county average. It, so it's sort of, it's not that far off from the county average. There's an area we'll look at, um, I believe we'll see that where it diverges from county averages. But then the other was the social factor, looking at the census response and voting. Both of those ranked in the lowest percentile category for responding. Um, home ownership. Now, this was one where I was intrigued, right? Is it this one? Yeah, the, this is the one that is different than the county. So going into this, again, housing didn't rank this dark blue, but if you go into it, you'll see that both home ownership and uncrowded housing is right near there. But the thing that was really interesting, the county average was the 71.4 percentile. But this tract here, and we are still in 403. Yeah, 403. This is the one here in Susanville. This one ranks at such a low percentile, 21.5 percent percentile in terms of home ownership. So just understanding why is it so different than the rest of the county? What's, you know, what are the factors in there? And you know, I'm going to do some, I'm going to break away from our PowerPoint for a minute. And I'm going to try to, um, I'm going to try to get online. Um, I'm going to just 
turn that off for a second, bear with me. I'm going to actually show you the um, it in dynamic in a dynamic part. So I'm going to go into um, of the process index. Here we go. So the in. And we're going to have a look at it as you would see it on the internet, so that you have a way um, um, so. so this is what it looks like um, when you go to it yourself. You click on that visit the HPI, the Healthy Places Index map. We click on there. It's incredibly easy and intuitive to use. And immediately you see California. It's just loading. And what you want to do is expand it up north. Drag it down so that you can have a good look. And here is PC Susanville. And this is where it gets really interesting. I'm going to expand it with Susanville remaining in the middle. You can begin to see that it's not as simple as, as one thing or another. There are many things going on in relation to one another. And here's the sliver of dark blue, and these are these are part, partly the regions that this particular one is called um, track 403, and this is where you click on it, and you can do this. It gives, comes comes up with the community conditions, the conditions under which this particular track either thrives, survives, or not. And here are those policy action areas that we talked about. These are the indicators that are dragging this community down or elevating it in terms of health. If there is any one of these you want me to click on that looks interesting to you, what what sort of sparks? And there's that the racial um, and ethnicity piece at the bottom. Is there anything that you'd like to know more about about this particular track? I'm guessing that's where we are now. Right here, yes. That's, that's fascinating, isn't it? Do you want me to look at sort of, for example, education? Yes. What does education look like? So you can see that although high school enrollment is quite strong here, the rate of success in then going on towards a bachelor, bachelor's degree, you know, and or higher education is actually significantly low. It's in the lowest quartile of the Healthy Places Index. So you want to click on that little arrow to find out why. And scroll down a little bit. It gives you the county um, comparison to the state. What does it mean? The percent of people over 25 with a bachelor's education or higher. Or higher. And what's the connection to health? Everyone should have an opportunity to see higher education and go to the college to college if they choose. The college education is essential for many higher paying careers and it also helps make helps people develop the cognitive skills and knowledge necessary to make healthy choices. A college education can also build important social and physiological skills. So in each one of these policy action areas, you can click on one of those Let's click on transportation, for example, and you can see what is it that's making it, placing it where it is on multiple places in it. So you can see that automobile, like access to cars, individual car ownership, is clearly really low. And um, what's that got to do with health? So you click on a little black arrow here, and it gives you the, the county state comparison. So it says, Everyone should have safe, accessible, and convenient transportation options to get to work and other destinations, especially if they do not own or have access to a car. The lack of access to a car should not limit people's access to opportunities. Getting around by foot, bike, and public transit also helps create, create opportunities for physical activity, encourages social cohesion, and reduces contributions to climate change and air pollution. So it becomes really fascinating when you look at the story. You can, you can start to develop stories and visions about how your community might become better and more healthy if you were able to sort of turn the dial um, in one or another of these somewhat really somewhat specific areas. So you don't have to solve the issues of the world, solve the issues of lesson. 
and to choose something that has meaning to do with it. Bring the story of that thing. Create some awareness within your community for that in a positive way that creates change. So was that helpful to actually see the, the map itself in a dynamic form? We were kind of our second inputs. Last night we were in Quincy and they were our first inputs, but it helps us improve because what we started by showing was very academic. It's actually really simple. Just like grab the link and just go and have fun with this. So I would love to know who you are. Um, um, yeah, I'm just going to put this back onto the, the PowerPoint for a moment. There's one thing I kind of missed. Has anyone, anyone ever heard of the WPA? <laughs> um, anyone else? Yes. Do you want to do a project? Yes, the works progress on administration. Oh. And it was a, a federal program ran between the mid-1930s to the mid-1940s as you know, America was emerging from the Great Depression in which the federal government turned to artists to, to say, we'll buddy you up with one or other of our you know, federal departments, and we want you to shine a light on the good work of you know, what can be achieved, and help us achieve it in the local community by drawing awareness to these areas, and by feeding back to us in local communities. So it was an astounding success. And it's one of those things that it was such a success that names such as Jackson Pollock, you know, an artist we've all heard of, um, had his fame, you know, found his fame through the WPA. Ever since then, America's been thinking, why did we have more WPA type programs? This will be the first statewide pilot of its kind to, to sort of um, mirror, if you like, the WPA as a program, and all eyes of the nation are on this statewide program. So um, I've already had to present, Katrina and I presented to the National Coalition of County Boards of Supervisors of Community um, in the first week of the grant activity period to describe what our um, aims were and our strategies were for success. And, um, one of our strategies is that success is coming to meet you in person to tell you about your opportunity and to ask you more about your community so that we can then go away and create better, a better grant for that and that's really neat for you. So I'd love to just go around and give you to come here. We'll start over here. Senators and the Arts Council and Literary Arts Journey. Wonderful. And just in case, because we we're recording it. So June senders, you will have to see me. <laughs> June senders, and you'll June will involve the literary arts. So it's great. Thank you. I'm Daniela Henning. I'm a poet. I went back to school um, in my 40s and 50s. I got my way with it from the Mona College. So education is really, really important to me. Yeah. yeah. And I have been running for. Uh, um, Twenty-eight years. And of course, you have a lovely. You and I share this lovely connection because you lived in Grass Valley. We loved it there. Yeah. We want you back. <laughs> 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 and what's your name? Christine Johnson. I'm a program coordinator at West County Public Health, and. Um, one of the reasons that I'm here is to help make a connection for artists who need or want information about public health. Mm -hmm. uh, our concerns, our, our programs that we have to offer, um, some of the issues that we've been facing. Um, but mostly it's like what we do in the community. I don't you know that that is really well known. You see, this is it's so funny because if I was to talk to our county administrator, you know, the CEO of the county, she would say exactly the same thing. People don't know how hard we're working and all the great things that we do. So here we are, the state government is turning to artists to have artists help frame issues that are critical to society. So 
an example for you might be how can we put artists to work? Why does you money put artists to work to um, around campaigns that get people vaccinated, for example? You know, we're just coming out of this massive pandemic, this miserable pandemic, two and a half years. And um, uh, it's no wonder that you see programs such as this arising you know, from the, the ashes of that. So I, I'm very excited. <laughs> Thank you. I just moved here to this with my wife. So, uh, yeah, I'm used to it. I was born and raised in San Joaquin Valley. I grew up in very rural uh, ranch living. So, rural, I'm used to rural. I went to Humboldt State University and I uh, enjoyed that very much. And uh, just looking to get plugged in and learn about you know, even the folks. And, so far, I've really enjoyed it. It's a great place. So, yeah, it's a great pleasure to learn here. And I can see with this uh, this school, it's absolutely tremendous for grant I mean, that's <laughs> the core of All the buildings that, that bring federal funds and state funds to rural communities. And a tool like this, I, I used something back in the, in the Bush administration. They had uh, some studies. They had the Health Emerge Initiative at that time. And these things are so important to be able to lay out and paint a picture of what your community needs, not only for the federal level, but to talk to people on the local level and to make people want to know about what is actually going on. So it's yeah. great that y'all are doing this. I would invite you to the Arts Council. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Second question Do you know any artists? And when we're talking about artists, we're not talking about just visual artists, it could be literary artists media artists, filmmakers, actors, um, creative technicians, um, musicians, performers. So, you know, yeah, I know quite a few, and actually one of my one of my favorite people in the world, he called me Bro Dad, and they <coughs> call him Bro Son. And he's uh, 10 years younger than me, he's one of my pals. And he asked me to come uh, for his, uh, he did like a thesis for film school. Oh, wow. He made a film. and. Uh, he, he got a poster and signed it for me, and I had to be hung up in my own hallway. And it's it's the arts that inspire, uh, they tell stories, things that we uh, remember for the rest of our lives that live on too much, too much, too much. We watch Netflix and we'll watch movies from the 80s just to be nostalgic, you know, to feel something from a different era. So the arts is uh, just as American as the flag and not the flag. And the arts is part of the political arts. You know? And so I know a lot. And going to humble is quite an experience as well. Mm -hmm. I've seen it over there. It's pretty extraordinary. Is that a new report? Is it a new report? It's a whole thing. And we will be going there, and the same thing will happen there. So keep in mind, people, you might want to tell them that you're tech town that might have projects in mind and people tell them what you want to keep. And there can be collaborations between towns for products that should be in that. Yeah, so for example, if you if you know more artists who live in another place, but there are things that make sense for you to collaborate on in relationship to the tracks that you're serving, um, uh, like the area that you're serving, and by all means, you know, propose something. Um, if we wanted to have this conversation so you can get thinking, and you're definitely kind of early alert for it. Hi, hi everyone, my name is Lindsay from Peterson. Um, so as you said, Lindsay, I'm sure you've just been here a couple of weeks ago. And um, I work at Latin College as their, their partnership person. And so um, I'm really just enjoying getting to know the community and connecting with folks. So I'm really happy to be here and um, hopefully, you know, make some connections and and uh, help help develop this economic piece that we kind of kind of touched on today. Mm -hmm. And um so yeah, I'm happy to be here and excited to be part of the community. I'm thinking maybe you have students in whatever discipline you have or community college who could perhaps co-create a project together, a multidisciplinary project, where departments work together. I'm free right now. I'm a free agent. <laughs> I can do a lot. Yeah, but, yeah, this week I've been meeting the faculty and um, 
it seems like a really um, collaborative environment. So, mm -hmm. you know, folks that have known each other for decades, you know, and our neighbors even. And so it's really interesting to kind of get to know the dynamics, uh, you know, from like a big city versus uh, living here. So it's really interesting. So, so um, we came from like the central central valley, the central coast. Um, but I also I grew up in San Francisco. I also lived in LA for so many years. Yeah. <laughs> My name is Randall Pantaleo. Um, lived in Susan for forty some odd years. Raised in Mendocino, a little town close to my community. Um, my first years were spent at a logging camp in Humboldt County. I'm a fourth generation logger and the last of the bunch, my God. And, um, um, let me try to shorten this up. I was 47 and went back to school here last year. Um, went to the investment program in my community. All the kinds of this classes. Finally, wound up getting my uh, transfer degree because I got hurt pretty bad in the woods and um, wound up finally doing where I was sitting when I was 18. Um, I got my MFA in 08 from um, the Academy of Art in San Francisco. And um, I teach art history at last Academy College. I teach art appreciation there. I teach, um, I've taught every studio class they offer. And the painter, I think it's good to hear. These people can be more on as far as concerned. <laughs> <laughs> these people may be more than welcome many times. And uh, whenever they call me, maybe if you got something new, or a guy like dropped out, sure. So I feel like this up this whole work. Um, what else do you want to know? <laughs> Susan Mills is based on that. We've, um, we've traveled a little bit of a distance between the other city we drove up through Bellingville and, and then past Camptonville, Sierra City. Um, We'll be going up to our and then you know, Gray Eagle and up to um, Rubus and Mount Lesson. And of course, it's heavily wooded. And then there's the heartbreaking reality of climate change and, um, you know, the developing catastrophic nature of nature and wildfire and evidence of that all along the route. When we were in um, Quincy last night, Somewhere that was one of the first oldest community operating horse grown logging companies or something. I think I saw it. So when you began to speak about your logging days, I immediately thought of that. Um, do you have a relationship to logging now and you know new methods of forest management and things? Well, I definitely have an opinion about it. You bet. <laughs> Fuel loads, lack of suppression, and so on. So, yeah, I'm a bit antagonistic because um, I, I almost didn't kill by it. Yeah. Okay. And when you have that relationship with the environment, the respect is much different than your other person. Yes. You know, um, but yes, I definitely have some opinions. Mm -hmm. um, but as a, as a painter, as an artist, uh, I think it's important to understand, at least at, at, as a foundation, that in Mendocino, a uh, very small town of 60, it's very small, it's a ghost town, nothing like it in this town. I grew up alongside loggers, I grew up alongside fishermen and rural workers and artists. So becoming one is not unusual. Um, it wasn't until um, I came here when Massa Community College was, you know, was in the landscape game. That my experience was not normal. Mm -hmm. um, not every place appreciates the arts. In fact, this community, um, although there's some tolerance for it, for it 
basically the foundation of this of this environment is um, pioneer spirit and skill. So that if it doesn't grow corn, we're not much interested. In it. Mm -hmm. um, but on the other hand, um, people I work with in logging. Um, More, more receptive to me making the change than you might think. Yes. These are hardcore men, to be sure, and I was raised by hardcore women in the family. And <clears throat> um, Donald Trump, very familiar with the guy I've never met. Him. I've taught, I, I teach out of prison. Those are the same kind of guys I've worked with in the woods and was raised by. Yeah. Down there, low to the ground. Um, finer sense, quicker sense of justice, and so on and so forth. So, so my work, my paintings are um, because you know we touched on it, and it's, there's precedent for it throughout Canada and the United States. That the environmentalistic paper culture. Mm -hmm. And my work touches on that. And I'm probably one of the few guys that you know, um, that references logging the same way cowboys represent cowboy log tools. But I do I do it much differently. I'm not illustrating at all. Because logging is not where I thought I would want to go. When I was in high school. Mm -hmm. I thought I was going to be uh, a painter in the arts. And I don't think you know, people who can have any kind of place. Um, but when you get married and have a kid, everything changes. Mm -hmm. Your priorities. So logging was easy. Yeah. And we're very good money. And I did it, even though I despised it totally. But I, I was very good at it. In fact, I was one of the best. And then, uh, you know, my wife said, that's it. I'm tired of being able to do something else. Well, I feel out of the way because it wants to go here. Well, I represent it differently. Conceptually, I'm trying to be it. So, um, and hopefully this, this map this crazy thing that will help you place this index will help you think about it in such a way that you can frame your life experiences and put, put them to use, channel them for funding. Well, you, your map, your healthy map here, the healthiest people, healthiest places, the least healthiest as far as I'm concerned. Mm -hmm. We don't need a state park here. Mm -hmm. It's accessible. There's not a problem with this park. Mm -hmm. We can walk in the woods freely. So what we what we what we hope will do is challenge challenge the, the map if you feel that it's not relevant to what your community feels the most to be healthy. Um, and thank you so much. That's a beautiful introduction. Who is sitting to your right, sir? <laughs> Someone who wanted to be a flyer with my wife. My name is Janet Corey, past president of the Lassie County Historical Society. So I've been in the community for many, many years. Um, they hurt my feelings. So I moved on. Yes. I am not local. I've lived here I've been here for 50 years. <laughs> and uh, was fascinated with this area because it has so much potential. Mm -hmm. I went to a church meeting one day and um, the subject of the conversation was that Susanville and Lassie County is not only that an individual can make a difference. And I always thought, wow, that's profound, mm -hmm. yes. Yeah. And uh, went to the historic society meeting. My husband and I were the youngest ones there. So Obviously, he became involved with being president and all that kind of stuff. And there's so many stories, and it's come to a 
our people to communicate what we have there. Yes. And I need a strong support of the murals that we have. In fact, the mural in the post office is in WPA and uh, is it Jason Potter? Jackson, yeah, yeah, he went to he went to Janesville. Yeah, he was in Janesville. Yeah, for heaven's sake, I'm sorry, you go. You see, I see, I pulled his name out of the hat for no, it's no coincidence. So, anyway, but I don't have a historic society behind me, uh, so I'm just an individual. I still believe oh, this is a nice little town. Yeah, raise my kids here and my grandchildren. Mm -hmm. And we have one of those wonderful experience from your experience. And I've heard really so many stories, and that's why I don't I don't want to disappear. Mm -hmm. I grew up taught at last night. Yeah. The college gym street. Well, the construction trade. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And my brother helped redo this building. This was one of his projects for oh. the college. And it just it it leaves. It leaves mm -hmm. on. I'm hoping that the art can be art or paint or tell the stories. And uh, we have a, a couple of murals. One of them, dear to my heart, just got painted over. Broke my heart because it was bad popcorn. Mm -hmm. A gentleman who was kind to the children and had a little popcorn and uh, tamale food, and it blew up. And one of the girls was hurt, and he felt so bad that he gave her this little metal man that would stir the popcorn so the popcorn wouldn't burn. Well, many years later, when I was president of the historic society, the lady in the elderly ages came and donated that little popcorn man to the museum so we could tell the story. Yeah. But the murals come, but hopefully, you know, someone. And replace them with something similar. And that's that's the wonderful thing about the you know documenting history, isn't it? Yes. Because it may not be visible, but you can read about it somewhere, and perhaps there's a picture of it. And this really is the role of the artist in the way document my world to make sense of it. Yes. And perhaps to change the you know the temper of society to for better for all of us. And I heard in a roundabout that with the traffic that's going down Main Street, Street that they're going to be using electric cars, you know, people mm -hmm. go in somewhere. Mm -hmm. I guess the Bank of America is going to be such a station. And what a nice area for them to walk our, our little town mm -hmm. and see the mirrors and little buildings. Great. It sounds yes. like a project. There's something, it feels like something. Is brilliant. Yes. I, we, we went to have a look at the murals. We were so touched by that. And then Laura shared with me that one of the murals that we looked at was painted by a very dear, um, very formidable artist who lived in my hometown, oh, one city in our hometown, Judith Lowry, who um, is a member of the Fox River Tribe here, and who comes and goes. And I had no idea about that. And so. We immediately were a moment to say, I started to send her a text of the picture of her mural, like, guess where I am? <laughs> anyway, so it was a lovely local connection. Laura, I'd love you to, um, how did you, yes, I'm, I'm going to come back to Stephanie. But <laughs> you weren't here in the beginning, so I'm trying to oh, pull you in. You are doing an amazing <laughs> job with the Arts Council, and you, we put you under quite a lot of pressure. To pull us together into short notice, and you did a grand job. Um, how did you get connected with the Arts Council? Uh, you know, it started out with just kind of filling my time. I was working at the farmers market at the time, and then I was transitioned over here because they just needed some help with administrative stuff, which is something I became familiar with working at the farm market. So um, that's how I came to be here to help kind of. Um, them on their feet a little bit and get some, get some things going administratively. Mm -hmm. um, and that slowly evolved into my blood. So, mm -hmm. so I'm here. <laughs> we are very grateful you are here. Aren't we, Stephanie? Yes. <laughs> Stephanie, over to you. Uh, 
Stephanie Stewart. I am the treasurer slash director of programming for the Lassen County Arts Council. I am the youngest member of the board. <laughs> and I feel very connected when Janet talks about getting involved in specific groups and being the youngest person there because I feel that everywhere I go. <laughs> I am not native to Susanville, but I did grow up here. My family relocated here from Santa Maria yeah. in Santa Barbara County uh, back in 1986. And I grew up here, went to school here, graduated from Lassen High School, graduated from Lassen College, uh, raising my children here. I got involved with the Arts Council because uh, I worked with Laura many years ago back at the Susanville Indian Rancheria. And so she had been telling me how they were kind of having a hard time filling some board seats. And so I began by just volunteering, just to kind of see where the Arts Council was at because my grandmother was a very big supporter of the arts and the Lassen County Arts Council um, when she lived here. She was a bit of a philanthropist and gave lots and lots of money to lots of organizations during her tenure in this town. Um, but one thing she always instilled in us was an appreciation of the arts and an appreciation of the history of the area that we're living in and trying to preserve that history. So she financed um, the revitalization of the old jail, the exterior. She had some plans to do the interior, but I'm guessing there was a differing of opinions between her and the Board of Supervisors back in that time. So she um, she did finance a lot of projects around town, including the Lassen County Arts Council. And I remember as a child going to many mixers and gallery openings and many events around the community. And so I was sad to see that the Arts Council um, couldn't really do a lot during COVID. And, uh, you know, they just kind of ran into a hard time trying to get their programming back on track. And I really enjoy programming. I really enjoy helping with the shows. And the children come to the gallery and volunteer and help game shows. Um, so we're trying to um, get the Arts Council back out into the community. We're trying to get it further out into the rest of the county because feel like that's one of the things that's very important is we represent the entire county but being located in Susanville we need a lot of help to get further out to the county we're a very rural area so I'm getting some of that programming out to these smaller communities outside of Susanville is a challenge but it's one that we are willing to accept. Maybe you have a listening tour of your own and so going back to the idea of how county arts councils will be working together for the part of the creative core, we will be um, working with Lassen Arts Council to help us um, make sure that every corner of Lassen County, all of all the residents and all of the cats um, know about this opportunity. So <coughs> you're absolutely right, all of us county arts council are responsible not just for the city and not for the zone, but also the entire, sometimes diverse populations within the entire county. And it's a real challenge. Like no other arts organizations ever have that level of responsibility. It's very close by, but with us, they're much more expensive. It's a, it's a glorious, um, but nonetheless challenging challenge. So, all the high schools and we really enjoy places we've never been before we were and they were so far away. I know the people are just awesome. I know on the side we're really involved with amazing. Mm -hmm. So maybe maybe springboarding from poetry out loud, which I'm sure all of you know it's a national recitation contest um, that really empowers high school poets. Like, Talk about like developing critical thinking, developing confidence, developing debating skills, which we're also afraid of these days and it's very clear at times. Um, and and you know, creating lasting memories of some of the world's greatest literature. Um, but imagine creating a program that springboards off the connections that you make across lessons <coughs> and poetry out loud into something else. What would that look like? Mm -hmm. So I just we're here to really challenge you. 
and um, and think about what this can be. If we were a smaller group, I'd have broken you up into little groups to brainstorm, but we're big enough um, that uh, that we can just talk together. Can you tell me the license we have? You want to give the criteria? Oh, yes. Okay. Right. So yes. maybe can we test that light on and see? Mm -hmm. So, meanwhile, Nevada County Arts Council, as the administering organization, has all kinds of questions that are firm. We know that we have to open a program that invites applications from all of you by February. And California Arts Council wants from us a you know a proposed grant guidelines for that by early January. So we're listening to you so that we can get a sense of what we can write for your county as well as all the other 18 counties we're taking into account. And some of the things that we're thinking about, well, how do we divide up the money? You know, we have three point uh, about three and a half million to disperse over 19 counties. So if you were to break that, I think it's about 130 or 140, if we do it politically, you know, by county. Um, but actually what we really want to do is impact those dark blue areas. So we will be looking at grant applications um, that directly address issues within the healthy places and us um, that are very severe. And really affecting the local populations. Laura, you mentioned your affiliation with the branch area, or you used to work with I'm curious, you know, I would be curious. I hope that that perhaps there will be artists that are willing to work with the branch area and come up with a, a project, for example. Um, sometimes um, tribal people need voices, may not have the artist, but have the story to tell. So, how can we? You know, how can we make that work together? Um, but so, so these are all the different ways that we're thinking, oh my goodness, what's the algorithm for making, you know, for being fair with the funding? So there's the degree to which a county has lots of blue areas, unhealthy areas, dark areas, the county population, its geographic size, do we take those things into account? County tribal and ethnic considerations or composition? As long as it's not passion in my car. <laughs> <laughs> it sounded like it was that sickening sound. Did you hear it? <laughs> um, the overall proposal strength. I mean, obviously, that's going to say that. Um, the likely longevity, the longevity or sustainability of projects beyond the pilot programs, um, grant activity period. So you know that the grant activity period will end in the fall of 2024. You also know that this is a pilot program. It's the first statewide program of its kind that connects artists with a very specific mandate of workforce development. And we must be paying our artists to do this good work for society. Um, to what degree can a project um, become a case study? You know, the gold standard for how to approach community need. We look to you as. Um, and then options for or existence of cross-county cross collaboration and mentoring. Like, um, if, if you, for example, come from a different place and you have strong affiliations with a neighboring county or a neighboring city, and you both have the same issues, what can you do better together? And then um, the last one we actually added today. Can you have this Oh, well, we, as we came through um, Greenville and we with what was her name? Christy. Christy. Yes. I think it was Christy. Down at the spot and starting like she does the burger and food, but she <coughs> anyway, amazing. You people. all know presumably about what's it called? The spot, the spot right? It's um, oh, an area of Greenville that they have trailers on in there to um with, with like restaurants and other so people. basically right restaurants. in the middle of a city that's been entirely like burned down. There is a collection of trailers around which profound creativity is growing and growing, and collaborations with uh, between locals who haven't been frightened off by the fire and are determined to stay there and rebuild society. I mean, that's extraordinary. We just stopped, we found her in a car park, like doing this amazing stuff. So we talked to her, we actually filmed her 
<laughs> but what we realize is that Greenville and the way that whole census tract lands in the data here in the places in this does not calculate any of these pollutants in fire. So obviously the score is really not representative. So it's just really having awareness that this is data that's only in some of this is based on. Because two years is a long time. Yes. Yes, so much has happened in that time. So those are the, those are some of the questions. And then, you know, in terms of the grant size, do we create lots of small grants that will make lots of individual artists very happy? I think we should create a degree of smaller grants, maybe like a thousand, maybe five thousand dollar grants that we can give out. But also maybe we create larger, really impactful grants of a hundred thousand, which and then we might look at the degree to which there are partnerships involved, collaborations, cross-sector collaborations, maybe. And, and again, how do we evaluate them? So um, all these are considerations. So we invite, we completely invite your input from all of us. Yeah, I think that one on this slide. Yes. <laughs> so over to you. It's now 6.46, so we've been here for a while. Do you have any questions or thoughts? A question. After our kind of pieces are created, what do we, what's the end result? What's the goal? Where are they probably put for display or dissemination to the public? I love you that. Know. I love that. So so I got, I'm going to get to the point. No. No, that's great. And, and I think I would turn that question back to you. What are you going to do? What's your, when you have your project, how is it going to engage, um, you know, within the community? How will you draw people to that? Or how will you take it out and push it out to people? Um, and how will you evaluate that? You know, it will probably be a question. How will you know if you're successful? So we'll look to you for that. We probably will encourage, you know, we'll make it, like an optional thing that would be greater, for example, the Arts Council um, maybe could put on a show of local art from artists, you know, from one particular project or more than one. It wouldn't have to be visual, maybe you could have readings from it, or maybe if there's a documentary artist that um, has been successful um, in, in uh, receiving a grant, maybe, you know, they could show could share their work as well, but there are many, many forms it could take, but um, how will you know if you've been successful would be a key question that we ask of you. How for the arts? Let me just, I'm just going to unplug this for a moment, and then I'll plug it back in. I also serve the board of directors for the state advocacy organization and the state lobbying organization for the arts, um, but separate from my role as um, as, as um, Nevada County Arts Council's director. And this April, are you aware that April is Arts, Culture, and Creativity Month in California, in the state of California? It's National Poetry Month, exactly. And it's um, in Sacramento, it's Photography Month. Mm -hmm. But, but in, the, in the state of California, it's Arts, Culture, and Creativity Month. So we always try to have fun with that. We always encourage. Um, arts councils and local communities across the state to ask of their county board of supervisors um, um, for a proclamation naming April Arts, Culture and Creativity Month within their local community. So then it's fun because we're all having a big party together. I'm just going to go on to Californians for the Arts. I'm going to plug myself back in and then I'm going to um, show you something that we, we did which will Slightly uh, answer your question um, about how will we celebrate in what's called ACCM showcase. So we did this. Um, we did. Uh, we invited um, artists and arts organisations from across the state to submit existing works of art or arts-related projects that exemplify the one of five themes of arts, culture, and creativity month this year. Um, and so those themes included um, social justice and racial equity, community prosperity and resilience, um, art to heal, as in, have you probably heard that 
that phrase that's commonly used nowadays that artists are second responders. We don't run into the house to try to put the fire out. That's first responders. But we do immediately document that out to the world. The sense of um, everything that, that, that the fire, for example, has meant to the homeowners, the community, the city, the society, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and then arts as you know job creators um, towards economic recovery and empowerment and engagement for you. So we put together a gallery, and I'll show you something for fun that um, our organization locally did that was then in this gallery. So this is like an online gallery that's quite easy to create so the an arts council could do this. And we're thinking of doing this for upstate California. So if we go down to the bit, um, yeah. So here's a project that we did in Nevada County, which kind of exemplifies um, exemplifies um, the kind of work that you all have been thinking about, but it was on a slightly larger scale. So this project actually cost us four hundred thousand dollars, and it was over a three three year program um, length of time. And we wrote multiple grants. It wasn't just one grant that field. It was California Arts Council. It was universities, it was fire departments, etc. We called it Forest Fire. Um, it was the largest creative placemaking initiative, creative placemaking meaning, meaning kind of a collaboration of multiple sectors with the arts. Um, um, culminated as an exhibition of 19 visual, literary, and digital artists sharing the story of our forests and their 13,000 year history since the last ice age. Um, it's now just coming down. It was in Truckee in the Community Recreation Park District. Um, but it acknowledged Washoe lands and people through an immersive experience combining arts, science, industry, and education to reveal what roles each of us can play in helping to save our forests and protect them from further risk of catastrophic fire. So that's an example on a big scale of the kind of project. That, that we will probably try to create some sort of um, you know, online visual um, documentary, if you like, of, of all the projects that you create. Does that make sense? That you can take uh, pride on and put on your own local websites, et cetera, et cetera. So if you go, if you go through any of these, there uh, are um, you know, beautiful, beautiful projects that come from the city of the arts so, um, yeah, I just wanted to share that with you. Um, back to you. <laughs> Any other questions? What do you think we do? I don't know, you tell me. I don't have thoughts, I'm literally here to Everything you've just mentioned. We try to always. <laughs> I mean, my students. What's it like to be gay in Northern California, a small little community? Yeah. If I walk, they walk past me. I wind up with paintings with razor blades. Mm -hmm. I was informed by one young lady, vaginas are fun. You make it visual. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> one young fellow. All I could do to keep his clothes on on his family. He was like, look, my friend, I've got a 14 year old suit right there. You're not getting it. She says, well, I don't mind. Yes, you do. <laughs> <laughs> getting rid of the costume. Yeah. I have a, a young lady, 14, in, um, in my painting class. She was troubled. I knew what her trouble was. Um, Painted. Pretty soon she came, came to class with short sleeves and she was pregnant. She was bold enough to explain it to her. And now I just saw her a few weeks ago with a big hug and thanking for me for my class of the um, Where it's safe. You're weird out here in my class. You know? No matter what you 
<clears throat> and I like to back up Randy's comment because we had a, a high school show, Lassen County High School show, mm -hmm. and he, you know that was inviting all the county high school classes of kids, and that was some of the comments we got from parents. Was like, thank you so much for making this little place I have for somewhere for their kids to go. And you know we had a lot of people express, a lot of parents express, like. And my kid never comes out of their room, and they did because they wanted to bring something into the show. And these parents had no idea that their kids were capable of these amazing things that came into this little gallery. And it was pretty, it was definitely a compliment to the effort that was made to get that show in here. Um, and it was, you know, nothing, everything takes a lot of work and all these things, but it was definitely worth the comments and the, um, the comfort levels that we brought to these families, not just the kids, but the, the parents were the ones that were letting us know the difference. Yeah, there were grandparents or people, some girl gave a tour to her grandma on her little phone or something and did the yeah. whole thing. So, you know, I want to back up what Randy's saying. I've had, I've had a student who literally come out of my a closet in my studio in in young young girls' clothes and called my name. What do you want? These just as a young lady, you know, come here and sit down and have a class. It's like, um, I'm an artist. I've seen, I've, I've seen a woman pull her palm and look at her vagina. Right? I'm shocked. Okay. Um, and I asked, them, Are you going to go the rest of the day with us like that? Oh, no. It's waters. But in here, they're saying that's my job. Not just create a sales to save save money. They don't have to be an artist right now. It's really and but in my classroom, in one room, one room of the new thing. I think a lot of times that is the trouble with kids that are really artistic and do it's like creative yeah. and that's what it happens with a lot of kids. No. So yeah. so he, he used to go on his and I would just read things. Yeah. Came out and, and just going around, like I did some uh, creative writing workshops at the ranch. That's an absolutely wonderful to read that. Um, oh gosh, of course. But we, we got stories from people all around the community. They didn't have to be writers. We would get stories. And it was just a wonderful experience. And then we lay on the college and came out of the place. So I'm not real clear. Do you, do you want something established here? Are you for some, us to establish something as a cultural identifier? I, 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 we don't really have, a, I mean, it really, literally, this is about listening. So I'm lapping this up and I'm realizing that for you, and thinking that the, for this group, the youth was very important, isn't it? Mm -hmm. For you to allow their, your future, that all of our futures. In fact, it's never been more important. And you've seen within the Healthy Places Index that education is a very strong signifier of a community's health. And again, when we talk about health, let's think of alternative definitions of what health is, because this is what the Healthy Places Index is all about. So make it your own to provide what narrative you can from that. And then you make your case, you know what I mean? So I have the need to help us. Yeah, so I think safety for kids, like like it or not, we are not in a gen in a generation right now. We're not experiencing a young generation who is willing to fit into you know the society, societal norms that we were brought up with, right? It looks completely different. My daughter's now, my daughter's 18, she's most of her friends are like totally gender fluid, and she has completely educated our family into how to sensitively embrace this. And um, and so it's it's like we need education from our youth. We need to create safe places for them. What kind of project? What does that mean? What does that look like? Think about it. You have until about February. What we'll do is we'll create the guidelines. We'll introduce you to the guidelines. We'll have some kind of online webinar where we introduce and walk through the different questions that we ask you within the proposal, um, within the application. And then what we're hoping is that your local arts council will be available. Perhaps a member of the board of directors is, is um, 
given responsibility to answer questions by phone as local the local community will also be available um, or nowhere. Um, but we your work with your local health council um, to receive technical assistance and any professional development that's needed. And we too will build build a sort of mental and professional development um, uh, aspect to the program to help us folks in filling our applications. But really it's up to you. Like you make the case and you've made some strong statements today. We really can support for your community. Now go away, look at that map, tally it up with what your vision is left on. Think about possible collaborations and partnerships and start, let it breathe. Great opportunity. Some artists work better on their own. You know, we're going to invite um, applications from individual artists who feel that they themselves have such an important message. If only they had a little bit of financial help, that um, that you know that that in itself is a loan. Perhaps we perhaps we provide funds to create month long or twelve month long artist residences in which an artist collaborates with um, a social service organisation, a department of health, um, an arts organisation, whatever. And maybe or maybe you know there are other projects that. Uh, Artists who really understand how to how to collaborate are working across sectors or within one sector, but with partnerships to um, to thrive and share that message. It's been described as the California uh, Creative Core as a really a public awareness campaign. Whatever it is that you propose, you are drawing attention to an area of society that could grow in strength within your community in order to create a balanced and healthy community. And that's what we're looking at. It's public awareness. How can you shine a light on this? So, since she's the Asian models in Japan, especially the government subsidizes the traditional crowds. Is that something we might talk about? I mean, we've got a Native American that we didn't see here. Yeah. They do the baskets, they do collect the uh, bear graphs and so on. Yeah. Is that what you're talking about? Could we? Totally. Absolutely. It just needs to be organized to a degree that we'll be able to show some kind of um, outcome in terms of community engagement. How does that particular project help to educate the community in a healthy way? Um, I noticed that they had art pieces that highlighted particular natural features, like trails and things of that nature. Mm -hmm. And it created like an organic, like artistic need that would attract tourism. And from what I'm hearing, it seems like the, the goal is multifaceted. It's not just about supporting the artists, it's more supporting the community, enriching the community, enriching the people. And I think part of that is also giving pride. Couldn't and, agree more. And long term projects seem to speak to that because that's that mural's been there for so, so many years. And we have all these beautiful aspects of our community that are so wonderful individualistically, but can we tie them together through art to create some sort of tourist attraction or local, you know, local appreciation? Mm -hmm. So, yeah, mm -hmm. I've seen like there's a, you know, a, they put a, a cow at the top of the, the trail. With the binoculars <laughs> on the top of the oh, hill in San Luis Obispo, and then they had all these animals all over the county. Almost like a scavenger hunt. <laughs> right. And, and so, like, I found like little things like that are intriguing because, with now, not also, and art is one of those things that's appreciated, but also we're going into a modern society where you can look up things online. What is the first thing you do when you go into communities? What are the top 10 things to do in Susanville? Well, if you had like something to the effect of an art installation that connected all the great trails and things in the area, it'd probably be in the top five. And little things like that can actually help the economy go up. So then, so then what you're thinking of, and some of those some of those marvelous connecting art with trails, for example, do create this incredible sense of place and, and ownership. Um, it's called creative place keeping. I think they love that word now. 
um, which places one sense of pride and place and family community um, and protects it for the land. And sometimes those projects can feel enormous and scary if you're the artist looking for funding for it. So that's when you'd want to, you know, shore up some community partnerships. Like, who, who does these projects? You know what I mean? It's bound to be different nonprofits that are working with the planning department or parks and recreation, et cetera, et cetera. That immediately ticks the box of one of those policy action areas, you know, the relationship of, of a community and an individual to um, the proximity of a, a relationship or community to, um, to nature. Um, access to community to us and the rest of the rails. So I know that we really enjoy hiking and we enjoy the outdoors and a lot of the, you know, the online things, even yeah, with this can go be a great but I've noticed in a lot of I used to travel on public speaking all over the country, and I noticed that a lot of, of some of the most beautiful places they have these this way of connecting their the, the great parts of their city, the great parts of their area of features. And I think what y'all are explaining about this art project, in, in the way my mind gravitates is like, you want to support the local artists, you want to create beautiful art in the community. But I, I'm kind of a super frugal person. <laughs> so I think about how can I make money out of it too? And it's like, if it's something that supports tourism and supports taxes in the county, and people are coming from Reno to say, hey, we got to do that loop this weekend. And, you know, yada, yada, yada. and then if you are thinking like that, don't forget your local tribal peoples who understood this land, you know, millennial, you know, thousands of years before us, bring them in, make them partners with them, make sure you're getting it right in consultation with them. Love it. We can find the uh, speakers, best speakers. Cookie, maybe like a speaker series. Love it. I haven't heard this before. It's very interesting. Native yes. American fine artists are not yes. all interested in making baskets, so we are very much in the social commons mm -hmm. on a fine art level. I don't think the folks here even know that exists. I teach it, so it's not a bit. But uh, then there's the Mexican muralists, which is a big kind of tourism. Mm -hmm. They're very interested in that. Mm -hmm. The unsung, unsung, um, Black artists, women artists. Yeah. Um, this door is a little small, this guy. But is there, is there room for speaking? Yes, speaking. Yes. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's a little too easy. Is it tied in with some kind of a plan? Connect everything back to the healthy places. Oh, okay. Yes. Because it's, it's 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 I'm I'm not here to already be evaluating your proposals. I don't know enough yet. Because it's better because we haven't listened to all our communities. Keep thinking. I love what you say about you know. Think about your historically underrepresented communities. That's going to make your any proposal incredibly smart right away. The fact that you are aware of this. Um, and marginalized voices. Um, think about that too. Think about how you can do so rather than our normal mode of programming, which is slightly more accessible, but but to the majority. How can we how can we help? It's this it's this slide here, where was it? Um, <laughs> it's this slide here, isn't it? But this is just part of it. This is the, the cultural and racial mm -hmm. demographic. But you also have whole other sections of society that you want to challenge as needing help, such as the LGBTQIA community, for example, um, and the relative safety they feel within the community and how that affects their health, um, et cetera, et cetera. So I literally challenge you because I know we're going to be looking at that as well. Not alone, not as an isolated thing, but as part of the bigger picture. So it's seven in the morning, so we've been here for an hour and a half. It's been really delightful. I 